cuts in the tax rates in the 1960s. Republican President Ronald Reagan lower tax rates in the 80s, and then George W. Bush lowers tax rates once again in the 2000s. Four experiments, as it mm. were, one by a Democrat. In each of those four cases, what was the effect on the economy? The effect on the economy was to increase the rate of growth, increase the revenue received by the government. The rich not only paid more taxes after the tax cuts for the rich, as they call it, they paid a higher percentage of all taxes. Uh, and this started back in the 1920s. Uh, in the early 20s, the tax rate on the top income was 70, 73 uh, percent. And, and the people making over $100,000 paid something like 30 percent of all taxes. By the end of the decade, the tax rate on the top had been cut to 24 percent. People making over 100000 now paid 65 percent of all taxes. And the reason was quite simple, that when you have the tax rate at 73 percent, people simply don't pay it. They put their money into tax-exempt securities and arrange their financial affairs. So what we're really talking about, do you want a symbolic high tax rate on, uh, on the high-income people to, to win votes politically, uh, which, the, which the rich themselves are not, not going to pay? Uh, or do you really want uh, more tax revenue coming into the government? Don't forget, Ronald Reagan's deregulatory agenda allowed for-profit health care companies to flourish, contributing to the out-of-control health care costs we are now saddled with today. And remember, deregulation of the financial sector was a major cause of the 2008 crash, as it allowed banks to make risky bets. In other words, the Republican trickle-down claim that deregulation helps us all is baloney. Regulations that protect you and me from being harmed or fleeced or shafted, injured or sickened by corporate profits and services are worth the cost. So don't fall for trickle-down nonsense. Making big corporations and the rich even richer through tax cuts and regulatory rollbacks doesn't make the rest of us any better off. It just makes big corporations and the rich even richer. The New York Times of May 21, 2006, featured estimates of how much revenue the federal government is losing as a result of tax cuts, more than $50 billion over a five-year period. Meanwhile, a front-page story in the Wall Street Journal reported the government as receiving a surge in unanticipated revenue coming from the rich. There is no contradiction between these two stories. The Times reported estimates, while the Wall Street Journal reported what actually happened. Moreover, there is no real difference in outlook between the writers who wrote these two stories. To the Wall Street Journal writer, the increased tax revenue from the rich was a windfall for the U.S. Treasury. There has long been a difference in outlook between the reporters who write up the news for the Wall Street Journal and those who write the same newspaper's editorial page. If the reporter thinks that the increased revenue to the Treasury was unanticipated, that suggests that she has not been reading the editorial pages of her own newspaper. For years, indeed decades, the Wall Street Journal's editorial page has repeatedly been arguing that cutting tax rates increases tax revenues. Nor did this idea originate with them. There is a whole school of economists who have been saying the same thing even longer. There is nothing unanticipated about the increased revenue. It was unanticipated by the Congressional Budget Office's estimates, but that is why the CBO has come under fire from economists. But apparently none of this has yet registered on the Wall Street Journal's front-page reporter. More than 40 years ago, President John F. Kennedy got Congress to cut tax rates, with the idea that this would provide incentives to change economic behavior in a way that would increase economic growth and individual incomes and therefore lead to even more tax revenue coming into the Treasury than had been the case under the higher tax rates. That is exactly what happened. Years later, Ronald Reagan made the same argument, and his tax cuts for the rich produced the same result. Tax receipts during every year of the 1980s were higher than they had ever been in any year before. Moreover, taxes paid specifically by the rich were higher than before.
because their incomes rose so much as the economy boomed that they paid more total taxes despite the reduced tax rate. How surprised should we be that exactly the same thing has happened after tax cuts under the Bush administration? Apparently very surprised if we were front-page reporters for the Wall Street Journal. Given the steeply progressive tax rates, most of the taxes paid are paid by people in income brackets that liberals choose to call the rich, though that label would probably come as some surprise to many people in those brackets. Therefore, any serious reductions in tax rates will necessarily directly affect them most. The point, however, is not simply to move money around, but to change behavior in a way that will result in more economic activity. Tax cuts have a long track record of doing that, resulting in rising national incomes and rising employment. But there is no way that some people are ever going to admit that what they call tax cuts for the rich are tax cuts for the economy. As far as they are concerned, this is all just an excuse to give something to the rich, in hopes that it will trickle down to the lower income brackets. A year ago, this column defied anyone to quote any economist, in government, academia, or anywhere else outside an insane asylum, who had ever argued in favor of such a trickle-down theory. Many people quoted David Stockman as saying that others had made that argument. But David Stockman was not even among the first thousand people to make that claim. What is crucial is that not one of those who made the claim could provide a single quote from anybody who had advocated a trickle-down theory. The trickle-down theory has been a stock phrase on the left for decades, and yet not one of those who denounce it can find anybody who advocated it. The tenacity with which they cling to these catchwords shows how desperately they need them, if only to safeguard their vision of the world and of themselves. Trickle down theory and tax cuts for the rich. Thomas Sowell in his new booklet, quote, at various times and places, particular individuals have argued that existing tax rates are so high that the government should, would collect more tax revenues if it lowered those tax rates, close quote. Explain that argument. Oh, the argument is based on the belief that uh, people will change their behavior as you change the tax rates. Uh, those of the left often act as if uh, human beings are just like inert blocks of wood or like chess pieces that you can move around on the, on the chessboard to put wherever you want to carry out some grand design. But of course, people react to, to these things. Now, it's a theory, it's a hypothesis, and you could test it. Almost never is it tested. People then, people instead say, oh, you just want to give tax cuts to the rich. Right. Now, you note in, in this booklet, a uh, Brief as it is, you cover a lot of ground here. You write about various times and places people have advocated this, and you note several in particular. Republican Treasury Secretary Andrew Mellon argued for lower tax rates in the 20s. Democratic President John Kennedy argues for tax cut, cuts in the tax rates in the 1960s. Republican President Ronald Reagan lower tax rates in the 80s, and then George W. Bush lowers tax rates once again in the 2000s. Four experiments, as it mm. were, one by a Democrat. In each of those four cases, what was the effect on the economy? The effect on the economy was to increase the rate of growth, increase the revenue received by the government. The rich not only paid more taxes after the tax cuts for the rich, as they call it, they paid a higher percentage of all taxes. Uh, and this started back in the 1920s. Uh, in the early 20s, the tax rate on the top income was 70, 73%. Uh, the, and, the, and the people making over $100,000 paid something like 30% of all taxes. By the end of the decade, the tax rate on the top had been cut to 24%. People making over 100000 now paid 65% of all taxes. And the reason was quite simple, that when you have the tax rate is 73%, people simply don't pay it. They put their money into tax-exempt securities and arrange their financial affairs. So what we're really talking about, do you want a symbolic high tax rate on, uh, on the high-income people to, to win votes politically, uh, which, the, which the rich themselves are not, not going to pay? Uh, or do you really want uh, more tax revenue coming into the government? So the argument, you say it's, it's, it's an empirical matter. It can be yeah. tested. It has been tested. It has been. Four different times, uh -huh. and it always worked. That's right. All right. 
uh, in trickle-down theory and tax cuts for the rich, you quote such liberal heroes, progressive heroes, as Woodrow Wilson and John Maynard Keynes on the importance of keeping tax rates modest. The Keynes quotation is especially striking. Quote, John Maynard Keynes, taxation may be so high as to, de as to defeat its object. A reduction of taxation will run a better chance than an increase of balancing the budget. Close quote. Then you, Tom Sowell, write, at this point there was not yet a sharp partisan difference on lowering high tax rates. Close quote. Mm. When did this sharp partisan difference emerge? What happened? In the second half of the 20th century. And, uh, and on account of what? I guess over time the Democrats moved further and further left. And so you had in the party only those people who thought it was wonderful to raise tax rates on high-income high people. Trickle-down and millionaires. Now, the attack on this theory, which has been tested and shown to work. President Obama in December of last year, the market will take care of everything, they tell us. Jobs and prosperity will eventually trickle down yes. to everyone else. In April of this year, during the Bush years, the wealthy got wealthier, but prosperity sure didn't trickle down. In July, this past summer, Barack Obama, we've tried it their way, it didn't work. We were told that prosperity would start at the top and then trickle down, close quote. Where does this trickle, where does this phrase trickle down come from? Oh, I don't know, it was as far back as, uh, as, the, as the first, as the uh, Roosevelt administration. Uh, there is absolute, it, it is an incredible uh, thing. It's, there is a non-existent theory that is constantly being attacked. Uh, some years ago in my newspaper column, I challenged anybody to cite any economist outside of an insane asylum who had ever made that argument. Nobody ever, ever, ever came up with a single person. So when Barack Obama says in this past July, quote, we were told that prosperity Ask him would... who told him. Nobody told him. Nobody no told him. No economist has ever held that. Nobody. No politician has ever said it. I don't know of anybody who's ever said it. In fact, uh, when I put this out, and I went, went, went out in a nationally syndicated column, uh, various people uh, wrote me and said, well, so-and-so said this, so-and-so said it. But find me the person who said it. I don't want to hear how you... A said that B said, find me B and show me where he said it. And that was years ago. Not one example has been offered. All right. So trickle-down economics is not a political theory. It is a political, I beg your pardon, it's not an economic theory. It is a political hack phrase used. It's a caricature. Caricature. Yeah. In other words, the, the, the argument really is, is not that, they, that you should put more, more money in the hands of the wealthy. It, it, it's also a part of a zero-sum conception of the economy. There's the thought that if uh, you cut the tax rates on the rich, why then there'll be less taxes for the government, or you'll have to raise the taxes on other people to make up the difference, or cut programs, and so forth. So that, that, that I hear all the time, it drives me crazy. So what, so what about this notion, George Bush, it was a giveaway, that George Bush cut taxes on the rich, and if he had not done that, the budget would be much closer to balance. He was just giving it well, away. It was well, pointless. The sheer pointless. Yes, but in the in the in the in the paper, I, I point out where the New York Times itself says, you know, there's been an unexpectedly large uh, increase uh, in tax revenues from the wealthy and from corporations, which has uh, reduced the uh, projected budget deficit. And the question, yes, expectations are in the eyes of the beholder. Unexpected by the New York Times. Uh, unexpected by the New York Times, exactly. Right. But that's exactly what people have been expecting for more, at that point, three quarters of a century, and which has been happening, and the New York Times just chose not to uh, understand it.